The following program is presented with closed captioning available. This is a service of Maricopa College's television, channel 115. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Caratanuto coming to you from Glendale Community College, the site of the 2012 Valley of the Sun Bowl, and this is Inside Maricopa Sports. On this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports, we recap the Valley of the Sun Bowl matchup between Glendale and Mesa. We head out to Mesa Community College for your unique cross-country spotlight, and we see the new inductees to the SEC Athletic Hall of Fame, and talk to Gaucho head football coach Mickey Bell on this edition of Coach's Corner. All of this and more coming up on Inside Maricopa Sports. Stay tuned. Packers. Viking. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Welcome to Gridiron here at Glendale Community College for the 32nd Valley of the Sun Bowl between the Glendale Gauchos and the Mesa Community College Thunderbirds. What a phenomenal game it was. Let's get right to the action. In the first quarter after Mesa missed a 50 yard field goal, the Gauchos would get the ball and quarterback Dane McFarland will hook up with Jesse Tate from 32 yards out and that will put the Gauchos up seven to nothing. Quarterback Blake Kemp in the game, and he goes in from one yard out to tie the game up at seven, and that's how the first quarter would end. With Glendale up 10-7 in the second quarter, Blake Kemp back in at quarterback for Mesa, and he hooks up with JV on Freeman with his 20-yard touchdown pass, and the Thunderbirds would have their first lead at 14-10. After the Gauchos went three and out, they'd have to punt the ball. There was a bad snap and a line drive kick to Demarius Randall, and he takes it 56 yards to the house, and that puts Mesa up 21-10. But the Gauchos would battle back. One play later, John Brown comes in and hooks up with his 72-yard touchdown pass to John Green, and that puts the Gauchos within 421 to 17. Now, as the half is winding down, Dane McFarland is back in at quarterback. He hooks up with Marquise Coleman for this eight-yard touchdown pass, and Glendale will go into the locker room up 24 to 21. But in the fourth quarter, Mesa would charge back. They would get two early touchdowns. The first, a 68-yard pass from Jamison Lee to Demarius Randall, and the second was a three-yard touchdown pass from Blake Kemp to Tristan McClellan, and that made the score 38 to 35 with just under four minutes left to go in the game. But the Gauchos would have a very methodical drive down the field, and Mike Navarro would hit a 33-yard field goal, and that made the final score 41 to 35. The Gauchos win the 32nd Valley in the Sun Bowl. And now we're going to hear from the two guys that call the game, Jeff Lowry and the Hall of Fame coach Joe Kirsting. And guys, you talked about how both defenses were going to be big, but it seemed like both teams' offenses were the star of this game. Well, Mike, you're exactly right. You talk about the offense here today of both teams. Outstanding job, putting up over 70 points. Uh, Dane McFarlane of Glendale, the quarterback, he was 12 of 17 for 210 yards passing and three touchdowns. But, Coach, I think the key here was for Glendale, they didn't turn the ball over in that second half. That's absolutely right. You know, they, the two games they've lost here in the in the Valley, they've turned the ball over a significant number of times. And uh, McFarland threw the one interception early, but uh, in the second half did a, and, and the rest of the game did a great job using the play action, mixing it up, getting the ball to their big play receivers, and take advantage of some of the height disadvantages they had over the DBs for Mesa. So congratulations to Coach Mickey Bell and the Glendale Gauchos. We send it back down to Mike. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Great job by you guys up in the booth. Again, Glendale wins the 32nd Valley of the Sun Bowl, 41 to 35. More to come on Inside Maricopa Sports. We'll take a look at a Mesa Community College cross country runner, the Scottsdale Community College Athletic Hall of Fame inductions, and Coach's Corner. Stay with us. In today's world, layoffs are a fact of life. Stressful? Yes. End of the world? <laughs> no. But with a wife and two kids, I need new skills now. Discover yourself at the Maricopa Community Colleges, maricopa.edu. We've all used the saying, you're never too old to do anything. For MCC cross country runner, Carrie Camberg, she didn't just say it, she went out and proved it. And this year's women's cross country region one 2012 champion from Mesa, Carrie Camberg. <laughs> to be a champion in cross country is a great accomplishment, but to do it at 43 is unheard of. For Carrie Camberg, being a champion is something she always wanted to do. Being part of the team, that's one thing I missed out on back when I was a teenager, being part of a college sports team. And so I feel so blessed and honored to be able to have that opportunity this year and that the girls really embraced having me on the team. Even though there may have been doubters because of her age, Carrie hopes her inspirational message will encourage others. I hope to inspire them 
that, you know, maybe when they're older, maybe they're not going to go back and run on a college team, but maybe they're going to go run and, and do some other things. Coach Eamon Condon feels that Carrie's presence provides leadership. <laughs> The improvement she's made and the runners that run alongside her, that's the, the, the real benefit of, to the whole team is that she sets the standard. And I think she's just uh, brought the expectations to a whole different level. She's got that level of maturity. She knows that, in her case certainly, there's not too many more years like this. But even for a college runner, there's only a limited amount of years. And I think she's brought that message to them very early in their lives that take, take a chance while you have it. Condon believes that Carrie's strongest attribute is that she's so coachable. She's a team player. She gets in. She does exactly what I ask her to do every day. And she's running very well. I try to take in his knowledge without... Um, having my precursor ideas of, you know, how things should be done. Because I haven't run cross country before, and I have only done a few 5Ks before the season. So um, it's been good to get the knowledge and experience from him. Carrie's message to her children is a great life lesson as well. I tell them often that we often learn more from the races that we don't do well in or the, the meet we didn't win than the ones where we, where we won. Carrie took the momentum of her Region 1 victory to Nationals and finished six individually and also helped the Lady Thunderbirds to a sixth place team finish. Mike Caratinuto for Inside Maricopa Sports. Stay with us on Inside Maricopa Sports. We'll go to Scottsdale Community College for their Hall of Fame inductions and Jeff Lowry sits down with Mickey Bell in Coach's Corner. I'm the first one in my family to go to college. My dad says I'm a pioneer. That's cool and all, but this pioneer? still needs a little care and guidance. Discover yourself at the Maricopa Community Colleges, maricopa.edu. A lot of great athletes have competed at Scottsdale Community College and moved on to do great things. Lisa Aquafreda was at the 2012 Athletic Hall of Fame inductions. It is my pleasure to welcome you here tonight. Scottsdale Community College President Jan Geller addressed more than 50 people at a dinner recently. It was all part of the 2012 Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony at SEC. The night paid tribute to some of the great athletes and coaches that have contributed to the school. We really do love to relish in and celebrate their success and having them back here tonight is just wonderful. Scottsdale alumni, faculty and fans were present. Baseball legend Lou Frazier, who played for the Artichokes from 1985 to 86, was honored. Frazier's mentor presented him with the award. You know, I owe a lot of credit to this guy who believed in me, who uh, always forced me to become who I am today. Julie Crutchfield, along with football star Joe Germain, were inducted. Germain could not attend the event because he was coaching a Queen Creek High School football game. Joe played football and baseball for the school in 1995. And to be honored an event like this, a few months prior, the athletic department forms a consensus. They select athletes and coaches that have proved the test of time, been all Americans, but most importantly, made tremendous accomplishments during their time at school. I came here to coach women's gymnastics, and we had a great, great gymnastics program, not because of me, but because it Everybody wanted to go to SCC. Julie's gymnastics teams won five championships and finished second in the country in 1977, the same year she was named National Gymnastics Small Coach of the Year. Joe Germain was an all-conference player on both SEC's football and baseball teams. He holds a number of football records, including the most passing yards in a game. Germain played one year at SEC, then transferred to football powerhouse Ohio State University. There, he went on to have a college All-American MVP season his senior year. Frazier, or Sweet Lou as he was known, ranks as one of SEC's best baseball players ever for hitting and stolen bases. In my eyes, I, I didn't think I was very good, but in other people's eyes, you know, they thought I was a really good athlete. Frazier went on to become a successful coach for the Boston Red Sox, where he received two World Series championship rings. Frazier's mentor, John Kazanis, believes he also has the ability to inspire others. He's taken kids who were on their last leg, changed them to become guys who are making millions of dollars in the game. I'm trying to give back what he gave to me. These inductees attribute their success to the continuous encouragement and unconditional support they get from family, coaches, and teammates throughout the years. You can always be lots better than you think you can be. Just give it everything you have. For Inside Maricopa Sports, I'm Lisa Aquafreda.
Well, Coach's Corner brings us to Glendale Community College once again for the 2012 Valley of the Sun Bowl. And Mickey Bell, of course, the head coach of the Glendale Gauchos since 2007, joins me now. And Coach, uh, congratulations, four years in a row hosting the Valley of the Sun Bowl. Thank you. Uh, we're excited about it. And it's another game to play. You know, after all the months of training, it's a great reward for our players. This year is going to be a little different. Central Lakes uh, was scheduled to play here, but now Mesa has stepped in, and they will be playing you on the 1st of December. Yeah, due to a technical issue, an eligibility issue with Central Lakes, they were unable to fulfill their commitment to come out. And my suggestion when I heard that last Friday was, hey, let's, uh, knowing it's late in the process trying to find a team, was, you know, I sure wouldn't mind playing Mesa again. Now let's uh, see if we can get through those guys over here. What was your thought pattern uh, picking, selecting Mesa over the other two? Well, you know, the way, one, they had a really good year this year. Um, finishing the way we did, them beating us over there at Mesa. Uh, you know, it's one of those tastes in your mouth you kind of mm -hmm. like to do away with and not have to live with for nine months. Good opportunity for both of our teams. What do you think this means for Mesa? This has been a program that has struggled the last couple of years. This is a team that's had six coaches in six years. What do you think it's going to mean for them? Uh, it's, you know, unfortunately, on our part, it's going to be a good uplift for them. You know, first year coach Ryan Felker uh, gets them into a bowl game, and you know, what they deserve. Uh, it's it's good for Maricopa County and, and the football that's played in Maricopa County. I, you know, I don't want to be selfish about Glendale, but. People don't understand the competitiveness of the, the game of football in our, in our league and in, in our, our county here. What does the Valley of the Sun Bowl mean to you personally? Oh, a great deal. I believe this will be my 13th one. I played in one uh, my sophomore year here at Glendale. It was an opportunity for me to, to get on the field again. I actually got a scholarship offer from the game. We played Snow College, and there was a coach from Utah State in the stands watching an offensive lineman from Snow College, and I had a pretty good game. Sent some film up to him and ended up with a scholarship up there. Now, you and I were talking before we went on the air about the 1982 Valley of the Sun Bowl where you had three Maricopa schools tied at the end of the regular season. How did, how did they settle that? That was a, it was a unique situation. Uh, PC had beaten us in the regular season. We beat Scottsdale. Scottsdale beat PC. We all ended up with the same record. So they had a three-way playoff type uh, set up, overtime rules, one night, uh, I believe it was the week before the Valley of the Sun Bowl, to determine who would represent Maricopa County in the Valley of the Sun Bowl. We opened up, uh, PC got a buy, so we opened up with Scottsdale, 25 yard line going in, pretty much you get one shot to do it. And <laughs> we, we, we uh, kicked the field goal and beat Scottsdale, went in for a 20 minute break, came out and played PC and ended up beating them with a the touchdown. Wow, that had to be pretty exciting. That was a lot of fun. And what happened against Snow? Uh, Snow was a pretty good team back then. They weren't in the league yet, uh, and they were a really good team. They ended up beating us 41 to 20 something. Oh, okay. Pretty good little licking. And then they eventually joined the Western States yes, Football League. Yes, along yeah. with Ricks and uh, Dixie, which is in the last few years have dropped out of it. You know, at the junior college level, I, you know, I, and this is, I know, a transitionary uh, time in most of these students' life and in your football players, but the tradition here, uh, what? Is the tradition, is it, does it really mean a lot here at Glendale? Yes, it does. We've got a lot of former players uh, dating back to the guys I played with here in 81, 82. Still support the team and the program. Uh, quite a few of them will be out at the ball game, especially once here we are playing in town rival Mesa. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of support. Um, I hear it all the time from players that go on and play at four year universities. That the best time they ever had was here at Glendale, and I can attest to that. I'm one of them. Well, Glendale's had a tremendous amount of success. Of course, three national championships uh, down through the years. Uh, those three championships were fairly recent. And uh, this is a great school, a great football tradition here at Glendale Community College. Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to call it and uh, can't wait to see the two teams on December 1st. Thank you. We're excited. All right. That's going to do it for Coach's Corner. I'm Jeff Lowry. That's going to do it for this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports. Again, we'd like to congratulate the Gauchos for being the 2012 Valley of the Sun Bowl champions. For dates and times of our show, visit our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. Go to our Facebook page for news and updates, and check out our YouTube channel for all of MCTV's original programming. For our entire Inside Maricopa Sports team, I'm Mike Caratinuto.